Have you ever had really dark or bad thoughts? And then the next day you wake up perfectly happy with no trace of those emotions whatsoever? Ever wondered where all that negativity went? Well, turns out it doesn't simply disappear. Welcome to my newcomer's guide to Persona 3. Meet shadows, negative emotions and thoughts made material. While personas are a person's inner strengths and power, shadows are their weaknesses and flaws. Things that we try to keep hidden from the world and the people around us. Little is known about a shadow's origin or purpose, but one thing is for sure, they're a danger to humanity, as they have been observed to eat people's minds, turning them into brainless zombies that can do little more than stand and breathe. Shadows are the main enemy of the game, being the prominent encounter of their threats throughout the dungeon. You'll find them in every hall and corner, roaming around and ready to charge at anything that moves. Once in battle, they will transform out of their blob-like state and start attacking you. Shadows can take on quite a lot of different forms, which include, but are not limited to, a puddle of goo, a table, a giant beetle, a bird, dice, a bird holding a lantern, Hulk Hogan, your mother, and many more. Interestingly enough, shadows are also classified by Arcanas, but only up to number 12, which corresponds to the hanged man. You can tell what Arcana a shadow belongs to by their mask. In most cases you can figure out what kind of a threat a shadow possesses by its arcana. Emperor shadows are usually tanky heavy hitters that favor using physical attacks. Lover shadows will try to sow discord in your party by using status ailments and make fights longer by using healing spells. Strength shadows will try to beat the hell out of you. You'll start finding more patterns as you fight more and more shadows of the same arcana. I've divided all the shadows you'll meet in 5 different categories. They are as follows. Regular shadows. The most common shadow type you'll come across in the game. They can be from any of the 12 arcanas mentioned before. The size of the shadow indicates the amount of enemies you'll be dealing with. Big shadows mean a 4 to 5 shadow encounter. Medium sized shadows means 2 or 3 enemies. And small ones mean a 1 enemy encounter. Keep in mind though, a 1 shadow encounter does not equal an easy fight. Small one. This shouldn't be too. Holy mother of god! Fuck. Next are Elite Shadows. Elite Shadows, or Red Shadows as the game calls them, are special rare shadows that have a random chance of spawning in the floor you're on. You'll be able to identify these easily by their distinctive purplish glow. Elite Shadows are considerably stronger than normal shadows, but give double or even triple the XP, which makes them a high risk, high reward fight. Be careful when engaging these, since if they get the first turn on you, it will most likely end in your death. Next are Golden Shadows. Golden Shadows are- Oh crap, it spotted me! Quick, get it, get it, get it, get it! Ah, uh, damn it! Don't let it get away, catch it! Ah! Stop running, you little- Ah! Okay, maybe if we're sneaky about it- Ah! I got it! Ha ha ha! Prepare to die, you pain in the- Wait, what? No! <sighs> Golden Shadows are a very rare and elusive type of shadow. When defeated, they drop a valuable item be it a material for a weapon, coins that sell for a good amount of cash, or an item for a quest. When these shadows notice you, instead of attacking they will run away at Mach 7 and disappear after traveling a certain distance. On rare occasions, they will simply vanish on the spot if they see you. Even if you manage to catch one, there's still a small chance that they'll escape on their first turn and disappear from the floor entirely, meaning all the effort that you put into chasing them was for nothing. They have 99 agility and luck, which makes landing a hit on them next to impossible. The good news is that they will always die in one hit, so using a high accuracy, low damage skill is recommended. Thanks to their high agility, they will always get the first turn, even if you surprise attack them, and they will always get a turn after one of your teammates, meaning that every miss is another chance for the shadow to escape. Next we have Guardian Shadows. These shadows are more or less the bosses of the dungeon. You'll find one every 11 to 13 floors. Walking up to them is the only way to start the fight, which means they cannot be surprise attacked. Their appearance is usually that of a normal shadow but bigger. They all have gimmicks or spells that you must strategize against, either by fusing appropriate personas or getting items or gear against their bullshit. You will most likely die on your first encounter with these unless you come super prepared, and even then it's doubtful that all your party members will survive. So make sure you head back to the entrance and save before fighting them, as guardian battles cannot be escaped from. Finally, we have story boss shadows. These are related to story events, so there's not much I can give out without spoiling stuff. I will say that you are given a lot of time to prepare for them. Some of them are also not hard at all, 
but do keep in mind dying to one means having to load back to your last save and watch the cutscene before the boss all over again. That's all you need to know about the different types of shadow. Now I'll give you some small tidbits that will help you be prepared against your enemy. Number 1. When a shadow spots you, they can only chase after you for a certain distance. After they reach the maximum distance, they will stay in place but stay locked onto you, restarting the chase if you step into their zone. However, if you walk a far enough distance, you'll despawn the shadow. If you come back to it, it will have completely forgotten about you, leaving it open for a surprise attack. Number 2. All guardian shadows are immune to light, darkness and poison skills, and a lot of them are immune to status ailments. But not all of them. There exist a few guardian shadows that can be inflicted with certain status effects, like rage, distress, panic and charm. How exactly can you tell when a guardian is or isn't immune to these? Well, there's no easy way of knowing to be honest. One way of telling is if any of your party members try to use their status ailments on them. This indicates that the boss is vulnerable to that ailment in particular. But other than that, you'll just have to guess. If you find a new status ailment that you haven't seen before, try using it on the boss. It may end up working in your favor. Number 3 What the hell was that? I have a feeling that death is near! Oh no... I've been here for too long! I gotta reach the stairs! I hear him! He's getting closer! Uh, 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 I, I made it... Uh, I made it... Number 3 Don't stay in the floor for a long time If you want to leave the game for a second, make sure to pause it Because otherwise you'll come back to a very, very unpleasant surprise How is this shadow related? I think you can figure that out by yourself. And with that, we've covered all the important parts of what a shadow is. I will cover more about how to fight them as well as give an in-detail explanation on battle mechanics in my next video. Thanks a lot for watching, until next time.